Hi everyone, Coach Mac here. Today we're going to be reading Farmer Will Allen and the Growing Table, written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin and illustrated by Eric Shabazz Larkin. And there's an afterword from Will, from Will Allen who the story is written about. The dedication, my favorite part, to all those who have ever planted a seed and watched it grow. Farmers who tend food and flowers and tend the earth. I think we've all planted seeds before black stone sharks, so that's really nice to hear. To my God that gave me this body, to my parents that fed it well, and to my wife that made it happy. Really, really nice. All right. Farmer Will Allen is as tall as his truck. He can hold a cabbage or a basketball in one hand. When he laughs, everybody laughs. Glad to be in his crew. When he talks, everybody listens. But some say the special thing about Will Allen is that he can see what others cannot. Are they right? When he looked at an abandoned city lot, he saw a huge table heaped with food. Was he right? When Will Allen was a boy, bowls of peas, greens, and his favorite lima beans with ham covered the kitchen table. My mother often fixed enough food for 30, Will says. We never had a car or TV, but we always had good food. He remembers people who'd come to dinner, tired and drooped, and leave laughing. Will's family grew most of their food. He loved the food, but he hated the work. He planned to quit on planting, picking, and pulling weeds, and leave those Maryland fields for basketball or white shirt work. And he did. He graduated from college, and he moved to Belgium to play professional basketball. When a Belgian friend asked him to help dig potatoes, he realized that he loved digging in the dirt. He grew so much food that he and his wife, Sydney, Cindy, covered their entire kitchen table with Thanksgiving dinner for a team of basketball players. So that's really similar to what he did when he was growing up with his family. When Will was done with basketball, he worked a white shirt job in Wisconsin, and he found time to grow vegetables on Cindy's parents' land. But Will wanted his own place. He'd seen that fresh vegetables were scarce in the city as trout in the desert. He believed everyone everywhere had a right to good food. But how could Will farm in the middle of pavement and parking lots? One day driving in Milwaukee, he spot, Will spotted six empty greenhouses on a plot of land about the size of a supermarket for sale. He could see kids who ever had eaten a ripe tomato, ever crunched a raw green bean, sitting at his table, eating his vegetables. Will Allen bought that city lot. Will had to start on his table. He had the land, but the table was empty. The problem was Will's soil. Dirty with chemicals and pollution, he had no money for machines to dig out the bad soil for truckloads of good soil. What to do? In Belgium, Will had learned to make good soil with food garbage. They called it composting. But he needed lots of garbage. He asked his friends to save food waste, apple peels, old zucchinis, things like that. Will collected those scraps in big white buckets and dumped them into piles. He added hay, leaves, newspaper, red wiggler worms, water. Every now and then, and again, he turned the piles to get air into the mix. Neighborhood kids stopped by to ask him what he was doing. Will told them about the piles, about the worms, and that this would help the garbage become compost. The kids would come back day after day to help. One day, bad news. The Red Wiggler crew was dying. Will and his kids studied the worms for five years. They learned not to feed the worms too much. They discovered the best worm menu for Red Wigglers, no hot peppers, onions, or garlic, lots of watermelon rinds, sweet potato scraps, and molasses. Since the squirmy crew had stayed hard at work, Will says worm magic is what it takes to grow his farm. Once Will had good soil, he was ready to plant vegetables, but he didn't have much space. How could he grow enough food on a small city plot? Will Allen looked around, and he saw he had all the space, from the soil under his feet to the top of the greenhouses. He hung plant buckets from the ceiling. He grew greens in buckets, greens in rows. He crowded shelves with pots of spinach, chard, and lettuce. He grew stacks of tiny salad sprouts in boxes, hundreds of boxes. Will added hoop houses to hold more boxes. 
and more long rows of vegetables. He added vats of water and fish to his greenhouses. Fish water waste grows the sprouts. The sprouts clean the water and the fish. Fish, water, sprouts work together like a three-part farm machine. He added goats, chickens, turkeys, and bees that the city farm he named Growing Power. How beautiful. Farmer Will's work clothes are jeans and a blue sweatshirt with cut-off sleeves. He's busy from the early morning to the night. Still, one person could never grow all the food Will wanted to grow. Where would he find more farmers in the middle of the city? Will Allen looked around. He saw teenagers, school children, parents, grandparents. He taught them to be farmers. Then, Will's table helped as much as several supermarkets, thousands of pounds of food. Neighbors who lived in high rises, far off the growing grounds, came and still come to Will's farm to buy fresh vegetables, fish, or eggs. People have gone and still go to fancy restaurants to eat Will's food. But Will wanted his table to feed folks around the world. How could he build one huge table that crossed continents? Will thought about the problem of a world-sized table. He looked around and saw as many helpers who learned to be farmers. He would teach people everywhere to grow food for their own tables. Will Allen began to travel. He has crisscrossed the United States showing others how to farm in the city. He has taken his red wigglers to Kenya, to London, all over the world. The world has also come to his Milwaukee farm. 20,000 visitors a year tour the greenhouses, watch the goats, snack on greens, and go home planting, planning to start a farm on a city lot, rooftop, or an abandoned highway. Is Will Allen done? Never. We need 50 million more people growing food on porches, in pots, in side yards, he says. Will is always looking for new ways to make the table bigger. More schoolyard plots, more vertical farms that are five stories high, farms and empty factories and warehouses. Will Allen's dreams of one day when city farms are as common as street lights. Every table is covered with good food. Will Allen can see what others can't see. When he sees kids, he sees farmers. Will you be on Will Allen's crew? Will you grow vegetables for your family, your neighbors, on your porch, or your roof, or your yard? How big will your table be?